I do have my review. I know a lot of people are waiting for my review of the many saints of Newark, which I did see over the weekend. And I got to tell you, it's fantastic. It's one of the best prequel sequel things I've ever seen. It explains so much. The characters are great. I was at the edge of my seat the whole time. No, I wasn't. What a steaming pile of shit this was. Steaming pile of shit. I get I get caught every time. I I get my hopes up. I watch the trailer. These trailers, they ought to, they really it's all just pure false advertising trailers. They cut it in a way, and you're like, oh, what's that? Ooh, what happened there? And then you watch the movie, and you're like, oh, yeah, that was... Either they take the best parts of a movie and just shove them in a trailer, or uh, they misrepresent what you're seeing in the trailer by cutting it together in a way where you're like, oh, okay, that didn't really happen that way. Or uh, The worst part of The Many Saints of Newark is the the boringness. It was a bore. Nothing happened. There wasn't any real story to it. Not you like, all right, this is the Dickie Multisano story. The story of Christopher's dad, Dickie, and uh the early days of the uh the soprano kind of um uh, family, uh, the people that we were familiar with from from the Sopranos, uh, getting together, which we knew back by the '90s and and whatnot, uh, and early 2000s that they show on the TV show, what they'll turn out to be, um, and you kind of wanted that. You don't get it. You get an occasional glimpse of a caricature of those characters that we we saw knew and loved or hated from uh, the sopranos in a, presented to you in a cheap snl sketch kind of way uh that doesn't make sense it was it was pure fan service as they call it uh i like like i love red letter media i fucking love their reviews of things and whenever they review a star wars movie uh, there's one guy who's the guy who's kind of like round and, and has a high voice, Rick, not Rick, Richie, Rich. I don't know. But, uh, he, he just goes, they, as they're showing the movie, he goes, oh, an ad ad. Look, it's the Millennium Falcon. And you're supposed to just love it just because of that, you know? And that's what this was. Like, ah, Polly Walnuts! That's all I was thinking. Look! Junior says your sister's cunt! That's what we want to see! And I think the people that thought that it was a good movie, like, bought into that. Oh, look! It's Syl with his wig! <laughs> You're like, no! No, open your eyes! That doesn't make a good movie! It's junk. Like I said, no real storyline. It's supposed to be about uh, Dickie Moltisanti, Christopher's dad. And it was the most surface, no substance to it at all. Like I said, no real storyline. And you were supposed to see how Dickie Moltisanti, who, who Tony Soprano brought up in The Sopranos a few times as... Literally, he said he was his mentor. This was the guy that transformed Tony from a, a, a kind of, I don't know, a, a dummy kind of football player, high school, didn't really do much, into, like, set him on the course to what he would become, a mob boss, whatever the fuck. And from this movie, I think they spent 10 minutes together. I think they spent 10 minutes together and it was not a, a heavy 10 minutes. It, it, it was so, 
unsatisfying. You have left me unsatisfied. Unsatisfying and uh, unnecessary. Like when you when you make a, a, a prequel to something, which kind of sucks right from the get go, a prequel, because you know there's no real mystery. You're like, uh oh, is he in trouble? Is he gonna get killed? No. You know he's not gonna get killed. Because it's a prequel. Why's my phone on my volume? Hell was I thinking? So you know nothing's gonna happen to him. So th- that suspense is gone. And uh like the like I said, the Tony and Dickie Moltisanti thing was supposed to be this big part of Tony's life. Dickie Moltisanti, oh my God. And it, it was nothing. And here's my fucking take on the Tony Soprano story angle in The Many Saints of Newark. They cast Michael Gandolfini, James Gandolfini's son. Uh, James Gandolfini, just a monstrous presence on screen uh you you could not i defy i think when you look at roles that people have played in movies tv shows whatever and you always go wow i i can't imagine anyone else playing that role i don't think you'll find a situation that represents that more than tony soprano being james gandolfini there's no one who could have done that and made it as perfect as James Gandolfini did. Uh, he was just a great actor. He 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 grabbed that part up and played it to a T. Now you get his son, Michael Gandolfini. You're like, all right, I could see a resemblance. You know, like Frank Sinatra and Frank Sinatra Jr., but uh, is the charisma there? Is the the acting chops? Now, granted, it's the kids. He's a young guy. He hasn't had the experience in acting. This is pretty much his first gig. I saw him in that uh, Jersey Down the Shore movie with James Gandolfini, that shitty indie movie I watched the other night from um, the early two thousands, mid two thousands. I think. I'm I'm sorry. Um. And, and he was in it, he was five years old on a carousel. <laughs> like that's, that was his acting experience. James Gandolfini probably went, yeah, put him in a fucking carousel. It'll be uh, interesting. And uh, then he, he has to play young Tony Soprano. You're like, ah, that's a tough nut right there. And I don't think he did very well. And it looked like, just kind of a prop, like, like a publicity thing. Hey, by the way, Michael Gandolfini, James's son, is in it. It seemed like what they did was they filmed these various vignettes, little moments where Tony was with people that you go, look, it's Carmela. And you're like, oh, see, I get it. And and it then they shoved those into a shitty movie. Like, all right, here's Tony at a phone booth. He's calling uh Dickie and someone else, and we could put Carmella there. And we'll put what's his name from fucking Vesuvio. We'll put him there. Artie, Artie Buco with hair. And and then and then we'll uh yeah. I right, put it right there. Just shove it, shove it in the movie there. Oh, look, we got Tony. He's he's bouncing a basketball, and Dickie's just killed his dad in the fucking garage. Yeah, shove that here. Shove that in there. It was, b- like, blatantly shoehorned in just to say, look, Tony Soprano! <laughs> just fan service. The whole any scene with Tony in it was pure fan service. They had him with um, Richie, uh, uh, no, not Richie, um, um, uh, Jackie, Jackie Sr., Jackie April Sr. And and it was like, oh, okay. None of it mattered. None of it gave you any insight into anything. 
And and please stay on the line if you got a call. I'd like to see other people's uh, uh, take on this. But uh, it added nothing. Then, and and a lot of people thought this would be my biggest issue with it, and it wasn't. Like I understand, I can watch movies that uh, feel they have to be woke. Uh, I initially, you know. I go, ah, eh, fuck, okay. But if the movie's good, if the story's good, the writing, the acting is good, I'll deal with that shit. But this is just, it's a shitty movie, and the other shitty angle to it was, yeah, the woke Pranos. It was, it was woke. Uh, African Americans in the Sopranos TV show had a very limited role. They were relegated to uh, being second-class citizens to the Sopranos or a crooked um, community organizer when they put together that housing um, thing, the HUD, HUD deal, uh, and, and drug dealers and crackheads and props for the Italians to drop in bombs and, and you know not give any respect to. Uh, which was accurate. That's an accurate portrayal. Anyone who would be mad at that, why? Why don't they get a better? Well, because it's from the Italian mafia perception of people. So they're going to look at women as whores, and they're going to look at black people as fucking animal that they have to, you know, use occasionally, but don't ever give respect to. Well, I'm watching this fucking Many Saints in Newark, and they're at the pork store. It's Satriales. <laughs> and a black guy just walks in the back door. He just walks in to conduct business. This isn't even like a big guy either. This isn't like a black guy like that has a f f mob thing or... Just walks in and no one goes, what the fuck are you doing in here, you? <laughs> well, it, it was it was this um, kind of 2021 PC'd up version. There's a scene that was supposed to be, I think the initial idea that David Chase had was let's take some of these Soprano characters and put them back in time to the late 60s and the Newark riots. The Newark riots had a lot of impact on business and a lot of things that happened in, uh, in, in Newark. And I think that was his initial idea. But then when they started realizing that people wanted more of a Sopranos thing, they didn't want just the characters doing something that they really didn't give a shit about. They want a little insight. They want to show, maybe show some of the old stories that the guys would talk about in The Sopranos and recreate those uh, in, in the early uh, 70s, uh, late 60s, early 70s. And they, they could not get that right. They got the prop deal. They figured they'd put in uh, uh, Tony, which he would have been seven, eight years old in the late 60s. So that didn't work. He couldn't be a, a player in those days. So they had to bring it forward a little bit. But then because it was supposed to be a Newark riot thing, it was going to involve the black people. So then even though the Newark riots were literally a split second in this movie, it was like, ah, the riots. Ah, All right, it's over now. <laughs> it was supposed to be like the gist of the movie originally it was supposed to be the riots. And by the way, the the special special effects aren't very special, Beavis. It was the special effects were terrible. The the cinematography and and the filming of the Sopranos was way superior to what I saw in this major motion picture. When when, when they were showing the um the protest because apparently what started the uh uh Newark riots was uh Cops dragged this black guy out of a cab and beat the shit out of him. And then rumor had it they had killed him and it started the riots. So uh, the riots were like people holding these signs that looked 
just like these prop painted signs. They didn't look real in front of a police station. It looked like a high school play of a riot, of a, a demonstration. It didn't have a big kind of sprawling riot thing to it. Um, yes, yes, E-Rock. You're talking about how bad this movie looked. Oh, yeah. There's one scene where, uh, I'll just say that Dickie's driving, I guess, to the auto parts store with uh, with his dad. Yes. The, a third of the screen to the left is supposed to be dark, but like a view of Newark burning. Yeah. While they're driving into the, it's an aerial shot looking down, driving in. But yep. it takes up so much of the screen. I didn't even pay attention to the car. I'm just looking at the city. And it's a backdrop or, or a green screen still photo because there's no fire fluctuation. No, there's no. no smoke. And this is a long scene as he's driving slowly into there and then around into the garage. You're just looking at him like, there's just a tapestry hanging in the background. It was, yeah, it was done very poorly. And then when he's driving away from that auto parts thing and it's on fire and they have the flames in the window, it looked like... All I thought of actually was Those, when George Costanza's car catches on fire, the, the, um, the uh, whose who's car what was it fucking... Uh, uh, John uh, Voight's? Yeah, John yeah. Voight's car. And you see the reflection of the flames in the woman's mirror and she goes... Your car's on fire. That's how fake it looked. It looked like those fireplaces they sell in the furniture stores. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the, the fake, fake fireplaces. Fire. Yeah. There should have just been a round disc with flames on it, <laughs> slowly turning with a light behind it. Rainbow colors. <laughs> uh, the other question I had was, there's a scene where uh, young Tony's on the bus, and he's talking with another kid, and they get off and they go smoking. Is that Artie? Because he said, my father wants me to take over the restaurant. Yeah, Artie Bucco was okay. the, the guy you saw with Tony most of the time. When they were one-on-one, -on -one was his good friend Artie Bucco. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, okay. that was it. And uh, it just, dude, like I said, boring. It didn't add anything. The characters were caricatures. The story didn't have, like I said, Tony was supposed to be influenced so much by Dickie. And and, and, and then the, the twists you get, you're like, oh, ooh, who gave a shit? I got to see Junior yell, uh, you sit twice we got to see sill with a wig or a comb over uh joke three times uh paulie was a carry paulie wasn't i remember on the show tony so many times talked about how scary paulie walnuts was oh my god my father he said my father johnny used to say you be good or i'll i'll send you to uncle paulie i'll get uncle paulie after you and he goes, you scared the shit out of us. He's literally getting a manicure in one scene. And then he's like, I just bought this jacket. What do you like? He's acting like a fun oak. A mustard colored suit while yeah. they're sitting in the lounge. It looks terrible. It, 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 none of the characters were actually portrayed in this um, like they should have been. Like, like worthy of the, the characters that they were in the, uh, in the TV show. It was that fucking bad. I swear to you, tw about between 15 and 20 minutes in, uh, me and Missy are watching it. And, and between 15 and 20 minutes in, I go, uh, 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 <laughs> uh, uh, I don't see this getting better. <laughs> you just know, and it's so disappointing. You want to like it. Like, I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Through all of that, you realize as you get to the end that it was just a 90 minute teaser. For, for whatever they want to maybe do next. Yeah. Yeah. That to do a black mob show. There's going to be an HBO black mob show like they did with the Wonder Years. They're going to take, <laughs> it's going to be the fucking black Pranos, and they're just going to do a black version of the Sopranos. That's all I saw there was a uh, kind of a lead up to a sequel yep. of a prequel. And you knew, you knew if they didn't use the, uh, the, the it was the A1 woke up this morning as the intro for it, you're like, oh, it's the ending of the movie. Before yeah. the movie even was going, you had a different theme at the beginning. You go, oh, so they're going to use it at the end. Right. And then, yeah, there it was to and foreshadow there it was. what's coming. And it just, it's uh, so terrible. And, and the fact that Dickie Moltisani had to get uh, cucked by the black guy. He's got this Gumar off the boat Italian girl. 
and and she fucks the the black opponent of of Dicky. Like, like, first of all, where does that happen? Secondly, she tells him this. They're walking down the beach together and she decides to tell this sociopathic murderer that she knows, by the way, is a sociopathic murderer, that she fucked your rival, black guy rival that you want to kill and thought everything would just be okay. Like that was so out of the realm of anything you could even suspend disbelief for. But they had to fucking stick it to the guineas, didn't they? Look, a black guy's fucking your chick. They had to fucking do that. Had to go there. It's 2021. Oh, my God. I can't believe they didn't have fucking uh, present day. They should have went to present day and had fucking... uh, uh, who who could have who was still alive at that? Pauly just had Pauly Walnuts going. I gotta clean the George Floyd statue. This is degrading. Why why she, you shouldn't have to do this to a hero like George Floyd? He's got a toothbrush. He's cleaning the paint off of George Floyd's face. That's what like that's what they were leading up to. The the big part when she tells him on the beach that she fucked the, his black rival. Uh. And that's the only time you hear the N-bomb dropped. He just finally, you know, says uh, the N-bomb. And I'm like, they would have been saying that looking at the TV at the Newark riots, which they show in, in, the, in the movie. Uh, there's one point where Dickie's driving his car through Newark or whatever it's supposed to be. It looks like fucking horrible universal backlot. And he gets hit in the head with a rock or something, and he's bleeding. He gets out of his car, and he's like, what the fuck? And there's black people walking around looting and rioting and stuff. Not a peep out of him. They start shaking his car up and down to try to tip it off. He pulls his gun out, and he goes, get the fuck away from my car. You fucking, like, it would have, that's what it would have been. But you can't. They needed the big, they literally... The word was a reveal. The word was something that was built up to. That's how important it is to say that word. Oh, you just want to turn on a Quentin Tarantino movie and remember it could be used every three seconds and still be entertaining. Or me playing COD with Chris. Every three seconds. Last night was hilarious. Oh my God, was it hilarious. (laughs) Can't get enough. So uh, I'm watching um, I'm watching uh, Boardwalk Empire. I'm done with it again. I've, I've watched it when it came out, but um, we gave it a rewatch. And the season finale of that was a lot of interspersed flashbacks and present day stuff. Present day being, you know, the 30s at that point. But the early days was a very young Nucky Thompson. Uh, um and then a, a, a kind of a in his 20s he became a, a police officer deputy sheriff and then he became sheriff of uh, Atlantic City Steve Buscemi's great in it uh but i was watching how they did flashbacks now flashbacks obviously it's different than just making a prequel but their flashback sequences were so good and so fucking pertinent to the story. It literally showed you how Nucky Thompson turned into the piece of shit he was. Like, like it, it walked you through it. They did flashbacks in a few of the shows, but that final episode was, I would say, half flashbacks and half, and they kept going back and forth like that, showing Nucky, showing his brother Eli, and showing how they grew up. And this, the the times that Nucky knew what he was doing was terrible when he was in his 20s and how in his older years he was paying for it. Now, I don't know, this show came out, it ended seven years ago. So if you haven't seen it, fuck your mother. But uh, Nucky dies at the end. He gets shot at the end of uh, Boardwalk Empire. And it's perfect. You know why he gets shot? 
You know who does it. You know why they do it. And you know why he almost accepts it. it it's pure karmatic justice that happens to him. The, the person that kills him, everything is tied back to what he did in Atlantic City as he was working his way up and just trying to become the, the, the head guy, the big boss, knowing he, he did terrible things to people, altered people's lives in a crossroad of like, this would be okay for you. This is terrible. And knowing he drove him to the terrible part and that someday he's going to have to pay for that. And he did right there on the boardwalk in that last episode, but to watch the, the, the flashback sequences, the casting, the acting, every moment of those things were pertinent to what was happening in the story you were watching for, for the five seasons and how they fucked that up with this God damn many saints in Newark is beyond me. You got David Chase. You got the same writers, directors. You got all the same people working on it that either didn't give a shit, had so many things on them that they couldn't make the story they wanted to make, or just forgot what writing a, a, an entertaining story is. With characters that, god damn, you already have the characters. How do you fuck that up? You got them. You don't caricature them and throw them in there um, as cameos. Uh, build it. Work on the stuff from the show that you could, could flash back on. Uh, a lot of people are saying, what happened to the big, the big poker game robbery that uh, Jackie April and Tony did that made them that thing that made them. They, they did it. They were going to kill them for it, but instead they let him pay the money back. And that made them because it's like the balls on these two to rob our fucking poker game. And, and that was always a big story in, in the Sopranos. Nothing. <laughs> so again, um, just terrible. Let me see. Yep, here's another problem that I noticed. Jim, Florida, what's up? Hey, what's up? And yeah, my problem is I think they tried to shoehorn in Gandolfini's son and his age, and that caused the whole timeline to be fucked up. Yep. Because Paulie is supposed to be about 15 years older than Tony. Yeah. Because, you know, he talks about how he went with his dad in 65 or 66. Yeah. The story about the fight and that he was 25. So... At the time when this happened, Paulie should have been in his 30s. Yep. And not a fucking 20-year-old kid. And Syl is the same age as Tony. That was, that made no sense at all. The Syl angle. Syl was a part of, or, of he's the in yeah, the with, pork with store. Tony. He's yeah, in the pork, the pork store. When, when yeah. Tony's a kid, Tony's a 17-year-old dummy, and, 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 and Syl, who is at, supposed to be at least a comparable age, maybe a couple of years older, you could push he's that. He's like a made dude. Dude, he's like a made guy. He's making decisions for the family. He's doing that. And, and you're like, what, what it was? So then when Tony was 40, what was Syl 60? In yeah, fucking the surprise, it didn't make any fucking sense. And they like threw pussy in there just like pussy. So just so that they had him in there. The joke, the name was. I remember when the name was a joke when the show first came out. And there's a character called Big Pussy. Can you believe it? Big Pussy. I saw a girl the other. All oh, right. Yeah. Didn't yeah. Didn't the Newark riots happen at the same time as the L.A. riots and the Chicago riots and the Detroit riots? After yeah, there were a lot Martin of Luther King was killed. There was a lot of rioting going on back uh, in that the whole day. Summer of '68, right? Yeah, the summer of rioting and the um, the Democratic National Convention and all that shit. Uh, a lot of riots going on. But yeah, I mean, to to just use that as an excuse to again shoehorn in this black gang uh was ridiculous they would the sopranos or not even the sopranos because it was the DeMeo family at that time and i guess DeMeo was in jail um not leota it was and there was real no really no head head of the family at that point because i remember reading about that in a few synopses but uh yeah you don't 
you, you don't have a, a beef and carry it on like you would with other Italians with black mob. You would kill them. You would, like they weren't even strong. It was a few black dudes at a garage uh, that were kind of, you know, infringing on the numbers games with the Italians. You would dispatch that in a second. And then this guy becomes fucking Billy D. Williams. Uh, level smooth, cool gangsta guy. Uh, it was so ridiculous. I think you're right, though. They're gonna they're gonna create some show because they tried to tie Frank Lucas in. Yes, yeah, which is you know another fucking uh, bullshit. Uh, <laughs> they, it was, dude. It was so bad. It was so bad. Not the even first twenty in... minutes. I was like, what the fuck is this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what like, are we I looking was, at? This is not when they had the guy giving the speech about the Whitey on the Moon. I oh. thought I was watching a parody. Yeah, yeah, they were doing slam poetry. Fucking slam poetry. If I want slam poetry, I'll listen to Chip Chipperson. <laughs> Motherfuckers. Thank you, my friend. Take care. Good, uh, good take on it. Ba -ba -ba. Let's go boink. Here's uh, Marcos. Marcos from Yonkers? Yukers? <laughs> Yonkers, New York, yeah. where, where a lot of the movie was filmed at, actually. Oh. Um, Anthony, you motherfucker. You want to know something? Yeah. Before seeing the show today, I actually, after watching Many Saints twice this weekend, I actually thought it was okay. Oh. Now hearing you, you fucking pulled a Patrice on me. You convinced <laughs> me that the fucking movie was garbage. That's what Patrice and, did with Face Off. Uh, yeah, Jimmy yeah. did it. To, Jimmy did it to Patrice with Face Off. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. A lot of people were wondering what I thought of it over the weekend, and I did post a quick uh, tweet on it because you know you only have so many words uh, on Twitter, but uh, you know I try to yeah. get the point across. Um, but it was. It was just, it just wasn't good. Uh, the other thing, if if I can, Marcos, um, and maybe you could add to this, the uh, Michael Gandolfini's portrayal of Tony was like he was a stunad. The, he's like yeah. he's this fucking kid. It wasn't even like I understand how having a mother like Tony had could have made him a little needy and and withdrawn, but. The whiny voice he had, it was like, Tony, well, come on, <laughs> Uncle Dicky, what are we doing, Uncle Dicky? He sounded like a fucking blithering idiot. <laughs> yeah, dude, and you did hit the nail on the head. They absolutely threw all those caricatures as, uh, like, eye candy for soprano fans. Yep. That's how it was. I was like, oh, look at Paulie. Oh, look at yeah. Tootsie. Oh, yeah. Look, his mom said... Oh, you know, that same thing she used to say, like, oh, stop complaining. Like, yeah, yeah, it yeah. Exactly like oh, you said. Oh, enough of you. Yeah, what's her name? Vera Vera She's from the, the movies. So. <laughs> yeah, she did a good job in caricaturing uh, yes. Tony's mom, uh, Livia. She, she had the voice thing going. Uh, which was, you know, she did, she, if you're looking for someone to do an impression that you just go, oh, that's a good kind of impression. Then they, they did a good job with, um, with, uh, Livia. Other than that, Dude, it was a good, I was going to say Ray Liotta, what a waste. Oh God, what yeah. a fucking waste. Like I couldn't even understand what was the whole point. What's the whole point of having them in there? If like the actual good character that he could have played, they killed him off probably like what with the first 15, 20 minutes. They wanted to uh, put someone in there that is revered in mob movies because of his performance yeah. in Goodfellas. And then, yeah, they it, it's, it's uh, uh, Dickie Moltisante's um, father, uh, Dick, Dickie Hollywood is Ray Liotta. And then, now I've seen the trailer and I see Dickie talking with his seemingly his father in jail. But before that happens, he bashes his head on the fucking steering wheel and kills him. He kills his father, drives him to some place and burns him uh, in, in a factory thing. But then he's in. So me and Missy are looking at each other going, what the fuck? Is it a flashback of him talking? But it's like, no, it can't be because he's talking about present day shit and go. And then they show, there's the big reveal. He, he goes into prison. Here comes Ray Liotta. You're like, what the fuck? 
I'm his twin brother. Yeah. Oh, no. What is this? Yeah. Days of our fucking <laughs> lives? Is this General Hospital? That's a soap opera fucking ploy. You don't do that in a movie. Oh, pathetic. Pathetic. I'm his twin brother. I, I'm on Chantix. Oh, are you? jazz music. It was so fucking bad. We just looked at each other. There was so many times me and Missy just looked at each other and go like, oh, this is fucking terrible. <laughs> Felt so I bad did. that it was terrible. Well, thank you, Anthony. Cool, man. Thanks for uh, being a supporter of Compound Media, my friend. Absolutely, brother. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Yeah, that whole fucking thing. Just do not fucking Tony. He was like, kid and the other thing they did which uh, to me was another shoehorn i think they went into this movie with a list they had a fucking list before they had a script before they had the first fucking word of a script written down and they go all right what do we need to have in this all right we need poly walnuts like and then they just did all that stuff and then wrote something to sh fucking shoehorn everything in. A great example, and I called this when I saw the trailer. I actually said this when I first saw the trailer. I go, this high school counselor woman is Melfi. Like, she looked like Melfi. She sounded like Melfi. And in the movie, you see, she's psychoanalyzing Tony. Tony and the fucking uh, counselor are sitting there, much like. Tony and Melfi, she's asking him questions about his mother and his life. Her voice sounds like Melfi. It, it was, it was blatant. You know, the, uh, and I could see him in that meeting, you know, the, God, how, the psychiatrist part of The Sopranos was a huge part. The Melfi and Tony dynamic. How do we get that in there? Well, he wouldn't be seeing a psychiatrist that, what could we tell, you know, high school, there could be a counselor that counsels him. We can make her exactly like Melfi. All right, do that. Write that down. Dr. Melfi! <laughs> it's fucked. Dude! Just, just blatantly uh, trying to do the fan service. Fan service is terrible I, I there there are some things that do it so subtly that you can accept it and go like oh that's a little homage to something but when it is forced down your throat one of the worst fan service things i see and i think about it all the time because the movie is constantly on when i scroll past it is the great movie solo a star wars story the story of Han Solo. The, the amount of fucking shove fan service down your throat in that is, is unbelievable. But there's the scene where he's, he needs his ID. He's going somewhere. And he goes, what's your name? Han. Han what? What's his last name? And they go, he's like, Hamna, Hamna, Ham, Ed Norton. He don't know. It's, well, you're alone. Solo, Han Solo got his name. <laughs> First of all, you don't need to put that. It's his name. We don't need to know where his fucking last name comes. I assume it's from Mr. Solo, married fucking. It, it, you got Skywalker as a name and fucking, you know, Calrissian. Solo is, would be a name that fits in that atmosphere, in that universe. But it's like, oh, he's alone. Your name is Han Alone. <laughs> I'm Han Alone. Imagine that. Han Lonely. <laughs> it could have been anything. I'm Han by himself. They call me Han by himself. <laughs> Oh, stop. Not everything requires an explanation to be put into these fucking films.
Oh, fan service. I hate it. Fucking hate it. Oh, oh my God. I, I We might be at the point where we got to fucking make this text bigger on this goddamn thing. I hate to admit it, but uh, I was playing video games a long time last night. I know my eyes are a little burny. Burny? My eyes are burny. Uh, let me see. Okay. He liked the, uh, I'm willing to take the Vinny, Vinny from Brooklyn. What's up? How you doing, Ant? Very good, my friend. No, I mean, I didn't love him. I mean, I didn't love him more. I, I liked him more than I didn't like I thought it was very well acted. I got to be honest. I, I didn't expect uh, two Tony Sopranos. Uh, you know, the, all they told you was his son, his son, his son. And I'm wait, sitting there waiting for his son to appear. And he was, all, he was in the movie for about 20 minutes. But yeah, I, what, what it, though, I did like. Can I ask you, like, to explain sure. why you liked it? Like, what about it? Did you go? Oh, were there any moments that you that you were sitting there and you looked at the TV and went, "Oh, holy shit!" Like, like, was there any excitement? What did you like about it? I just thought that every actor in that movie was believable. Maybe I'm a little fucked up. I don't know. I I I I don't I don't know. It was way too short. I I can't believe how short it was. I expected it to be three hours. Thank God, because people ask me, "All right, uh, Many Saints in Newark or The Irishman? Which one was worse?" I go, "The Irishman by far, just because it was fucking too long. It was hours of that shit. At least they got it over with quickly." Oh my God! And, and, and do you think the guy who played Dicky Moltisanti, he looked more like Richie Aprile as a young guy? Yeah, yeah, you could see a uh, crazy Richie uh, in that. But all the guys, like, what was that scene with Tony and his buddies and the ice cream truck? Like, was that supposed to show Tony was a good-natured kid, that he's just giving out free ice cream? They beat up the ice cream man, and they steal his truck, and then they drive around neighborhoods and give kids free ice cream. And you're like, oh, I remember that. Tony wanted to be a nice guy. He wanted to be the good guy. And they, they literally didn't show him even turning into the bad guy. They, they left it with him just kind of being this whiny, semi-retarded, uh, kind of chubby uh, Italian kid. Now, I know that the guy who played Paulie was hardly even in the movie because I yeah. guess they, they didn't want to, like, ruin Paulie Walnut to, you know... I guess legacy. They showed him like a finoke with his uh, fucking attention yeah. to his, you know, he'd be out there trying to get the tan and he made sure, you know, I'm going to lift so my arms don't look like an old woman's. But uh, there's no need to just show him in two quick scenes where he's worried about his clothes and worried about his nails. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. Now, is it me or like Olivia Soprano? She looked just like Camilla. Uh, or did she look way too much like Camilla? Yeah, she did. There was a thing. Well, you know what? You could even excuse that being that Tony, being so obsessed with his mom, might have yeah. been attracted to a woman that was a lot like his mother. Uh, and that was kind of a thing that was in The Sopranos. So I'll even give him that. But uh, yeah. yeah. All right, my friend. Thank you for your input. I don't know why don't, you liked I it. but uh, I don't think this is going to lead to a series. I think this will be it. No, I, 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 I do too. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, thank you, sir. The only hope I have is uh, when you look at uh, the original Star Trek, Star Trek the motion picture, and then the Wrath of Khan, the second one was awesome. So maybe if they take their beating and look at this, maybe they'll be able to do something. Um, maybe if you want to do another prequel, cast it where Tony's uh, in his 20s and, and, and it doesn't have to be fucking Michael uh, Gandolfini. And uh, I don't know. Or maybe just leave the whole fucking thing alone. That Maybe that's the best answer. Leave it alone. Fucking great the way it is. Oh, oh I'm missing, um, let me see. Here we go. Uh, John, what's up, man? Hey, man, how you doing? Where you from, dude? Charleston, South Carolina. Ah, yes. My future yep. state. I love it. <laughs> Speaking of fan service, even just as fan service, they didn't do that well. Uh, Junior had that line about uh, he didn't have the makings of a varsity athlete. Yes. And Tony doesn't even react to it. It's like he never even heard it. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. yeah. It, it, if he was so upset about hearing it later in life, it might have made an impact when he first heard it when he was a kid. Yeah, maybe. Right. Yeah. And the worst part of the movie is that uh, Junior has him killed Dickie because he fell down some stairs and Dickie laughed at him. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't fit Junior Soprano's M.O. for anything. Like, he would really think and have to consider uh, something before he kills someone. And there always had to be a profit motive to it. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Junior got pissed and he would get um, offended by things. And, and But just for the fact of that, he wouldn't just kill somebody. It needed to be yeah. profitable. And for him to... Uh, to have uh, uh, Dickie killed because he laughed at him when, after he fell down the stairs? Get the fuck out of Dodge. Yes, uh, E-Rock wants to add something here, sir. Was, was it also because when he picked up Johnny and Johnny was in the car lecturing, saying how Dickie uh, lost his father, but he still managed to earn and, and run everything, and Junior was letting things fall apart, Johnny was laying Oh, yeah, there's, there was a jealousy factor there, but there was no, there was no upside except for purely personal reasons for Junior to have him killed. Junior wouldn't have taken a spot or Junior wouldn't have like made more money from Dickie being killed. Right. It just was too personal. He could add personal. If Dickie was fucking him over financially right. and then insulted him, you could see that being the final straw and him going, yeah, this guy's got to go. But just for the fact that as he's helping him up from the stairs, he's laughing at him. Uh, that seems like a light final straw to, to want to kill somebody. It, it, you're, you're right, but I, I think it was from the, the, the lashing he got from Johnny, then this added on top of it, and yeah, he made it personal. Again, always very, it's just too personal without any profit motive to it. And they were yeah. all just about making money when it came to killing somebody. But what, didn't he try to try to kill Tony in the series too? Yeah, but that would have made him the head of the... Oh, okay. You know, right. he wanted to do that before they really sorted out who the head of the family was. Yeah, he wanted to be the boss. It looked like Tony was uh, uh, muscling in on him. Tony had done things where he'd taken money away from Junior and given it to some of his crew. Uh, so yeah, it was a profit motive there. Uh, but yeah, just to see... Uh, that looked like it's like, we need a twist. Hmm, we need a twist. And then yeah, that's what they gave us. Um, yeah, I don't get it. Thank you, sir. Uh, stop. <laughs> Let me see this. Andrew, what's up? <laughs> hey, and uh, I mean, this is not really delving deep into the story or anything, yeah. but I had a friend that basically ruined the movie even before I know I knew about how much it sucked. Uh, Michael Gandolfini looks like Stocker Channing Rizzo from Greece. <laughs> and I can't, every time I look at... <laughs> ah, Jesus. Am I, am I, am I, is my friend or myself off base on that? No, I, I think you're right. I didn't think it, but now looking at her picture, and he just whined through the whole thing. It wasn't, it gave me nothing. I wasn't seeing it and going, yeah, wow, that's kind of Tony. The only thing that did was in the trailer because they all probably looked and said, oh, when when he steps out of the phone booth and goes, uh, what did you say? That was a very Tony Soprano delivered line. Uh, and that was all you got that even reminded you of Tony. Uh, yeah, he was he was not good. He well, was not good at it. He didn't. Act, he doesn't act well. He's not a good actor. HBO can just seriously go suck a cock. Yeah. Uh, they they have been so downhill since the Sopranos have been off. Yep. The, I mean, Game of Thrones, fine, but they are the most narrative pushing. Uh, oh yeah. It, it used to be about movies. It used to be about really cool, like uh, Tales from the Crypt, Oz, yep. all that stuff. Now it's just everything has got to be diverse. Everything has got to have a oh, message. Oh yeah. It. Everything's got to have uh, some kind of a uh, ulterior motive narrative to it. Thank you, my friend. No problem. Uh, yeah. What did he like, Stocker Channing? Yeah, you look like Stock Stocker Channing. It's so funny, Greece, you know, high school, and there's Stocker Channing's fucking 40 in that movie, whatever the fuck. Um, well, there you go. There's my review. Uh, take from it what you will.